Before we start the directional movement, I typically like to make a custom character for my game. That way we can't use our default avatar and have really tall characters that can make the animations very very buggy. Force the character to have a specific look. I like to grab the I like to create a basic rig and insert a shirt and some pants. Here are the two IDs I'm using, but we displayed on the screen right here. I'll just be inserting them here. And for the pants, we'll be using this one. Good. Now rename your rig to starter character. And put them under the starter player folder right here. Now if we spawn in, we're going to spawn in as our custom character. Before we go further ahead in this tutorial, we have to quickly talk about the animations. In total, this advanced movement system has 12 separate animations. One for the front walk, back walk, left walk, right walk, sprint animation, and for me I'm using a Naruto sprint animation, jump animation, a landing animation, side animation, right roll, left roll, forward roll, and a back roll. You can either make your own animations or you can use the ones I have in the description. But I sent for a model. You have to open the model and export the animations one by one. Unfortunately though, if you're on R6, you have to make your own animations as these R15 animations aren't transmogable to R6 bodies. If you've decided to use matte animations, you can go to the link in the description. And once you get the model, you can go to your toolbox right here. Go to my models and you have this folder right here, R15 advanced animations. And when you open it, it will have every animation that you'll need to make this advanced movement system. Now all you have to do is right click, save to Roblox, name it whatever you want, and then export it. And you'll get the store ID here. And you want to export the rest of these ones as well. And save all of these one by one and copy down the IDs and put them in a notepad somewhere where we can use them later. These animations will be created for you locally so you'll be able to access them now. If for instance we take the if for instance we take the run animation save to Roblox export this under my name copy that we can use a rig, block avatar, animation editor. You can import. Oh, select select the rig. You can import the animation using the ID, and then this is my my animation that I've created. Then you can uh, modify this however you like, and then export it. then export it as your own right here. Obviously I'm gonna keep my one because I like it. But yeah, you can customize the animations as well. Now we want to create custom animations for our Roblox character. First we have to play the game. Then when we spawn in, we're gonna go under workspace our character here, which will be your name. Then you'll see this animate script, you want to copy it. Now return back to the workspace, you need to paste it under starter character scripts. The reason we do this is that any script under here will be copied into the starter character script. No, print hello. This will use our version of the animate script rather than initializing its own version. Now this is good because this means we can add our own custom animations. Now let's talk about our animations. This advanced movement system uses a total of 12 custom animations. Or you can go to the link in the description and you can use my animations. And now in our animate script, we can import our custom animations in here. For the idle animation, I'd like to use the same one for each of them. 
for some reason, an indentation messes up. So press tab to fix it. And now once you're done putting in your custom animations, you also have to change them under the animate property here and change each respective one. And one more thing, make sure you set both the walk and run animation to the same walk animation that we set previously. So make sure these two are the same. And once you're finished with that, if you play and play test our game, see our new animations have been imported. See a custom walk animation and a jump animation and full animation are displaying. Now that our custom shift locking is finished, let's start with the directional movement now. First, we have to create our animation instances inside of Replicate Storage. I'm going to put them all under a folder called Animations. I'm going to insert four animation objects in here. One, two, three, four. Name them Front Walk Anim. You can name these wherever you want. Back Walk Anim. Then put your respective animation IDs into each of these. Yep. And here. Now, once you've done that, we're gonna create four variables for these animations in here, and we're gonna load them into a humanoid. So first, we're gonna get a humanoid local hum this character with a child humanoid. Now we'll have local. Front walk enemy equals humanoid load animation game dot replicate storage dot animations dot front walk anim and do these for the other three one two four this left walk animation right walk animation Now once these are here, we now need to detect what keys a player is pressing, whether it be WASD, which is why we declared this. When we go under user input began, we're also going to check if input key code enum dot key code dot let's start with w then uh wait also we want to make sure these animations only play then when we're holding w we'll do front walk animation play and we're also going to check if they hold the other keys else if if you hold a for instance then a would mean the walking left, so we'll do the left walk animation. And repeat these with the rest of them. A S B back walk anim animation. So B D should be a right walk animation. And now if we play, you're gonna notice a small issue here. Our animations play respectively. But they don't stop. This is because we have to detect when the player lets go of WASD. Also, we have to update our keys too. Active keys dot W equals true. Active keys dot A equals true. We're going to be using this later. 
um, active keys dot s is true active keys dot d is true now how do we detect when the player lets go of a key there's another uh, event listener for user input servers called uis dot input ended connect function we we'll have input in here and gps if gps then return end now if our input is input dot key code is equal to or not enum dot a then print a has been this code right here This is how we detect when the player press pushes a key and when we release it. These are two separate event listeners. Oops. This should be enum.keycode.a by mistake. So if you press A, we're holding it, and when we let go, you can see A key was released. It's pressed, now released, pressed, released. Now this is good because this means we can stop that animation. Also, we want, we want to update active keys dot a is false because it means we let go of a. Now, left walk animation stop. Also, I prefer to use the directional movement when the player is actually shift locking. So, if shift lock enabled, then then we'll run all of this. And the same thing over here. If shift lock enabled, then to see with animations too. And now we have to repeat this for an else if for all other keys else if. I'll keep it the same order here. Start with W. A N W A S D D is the right walk animation. Now, if you play, this should work. As you can see, the directional movement works. Yeah, my animation is a little bit funky. Oops, I might have a few issues here. W should be the front walk animation. Now, this should work. See, the directional movement works. You may notice a small issue here. If we hold W and S at the same time, both of our animations play at the same time. And we don't want this. Same if you hold A and D, or D and A. See our animations stack together because it's detecting we're pressing both keys, so it plays both animations. There's a simple fix to this. Over here, when we push our keys, we can detect if A and D are being held and stop both animations. So if active keys A and active key, if active keys dot A and Active keys dot D, then left walk animation will stop as well, as well as the right walk animation. And we can do both the same for holding both W and S. D walking forwards and backwards, front walk animation will stop, and back walk animation will stop. And this will prevent our animations from stacking on top of each other. So I'm going to hold W and S, animation stop. A and D stops. D and A stops. A and D stops. W, S stops. S and W. Now our animations don't stack. You might notice our animations don't seem very smooth here. This is because when we play the animations, it plays very, very quickly. We can add a transition. If, for example, we add one second when we walk left, make our animation more smooth. See how my character slowly leans to the left. 
what I like to do is initialize this as a variable. So instead of passing a number here, I like to create a value up here. Animation delay. I typically like to set mine as 0.3. And you want to pass this variable into each of these brackets. I'm going to pass it here, 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 here. So animation is taking a default parameter, which is number of seconds it takes for the animation to start. So now, if we try directional movement, it seems a bit more smoother. Oops, an error over here. I typed something wrong. Yep. And S should be animation delay, like that. Now animations will seem a bit more smoother. Let's see. Now that looks more like directional movement. Oops, a small mistake I made is that we don't actually need to check if shift lock is being held. We want to stop the animations because the player might disable their shift lock while walking and it won't stop the animation. There we are. I disable my shift lock, we'll still stop my animation. 